Hey everybody, Bones here, Bones Garage, just bringing you an update what's going on at the garage. So, have another Rochester carburetor we're going to be rebuilding. It's for my 1973 Cadillac sedan. Um, this is the original carburetor. It has never been touched. This is the first time it's ever going to be rebuilt. And you can see it's really dirty. You can see how badly it's been leaking from between the base and the top plate or the body and the top plate of the carburetor. You can also see how badly the accelerator pump is leaking and just pushing gas right out of the hole here. And the biggest problem we had is this barrel right here was just dumping fuel into the engine. So as you were idling, it was just pushing a steady stream of fuel into the engine when it shouldn't be. There shouldn't have been anything coming out of that Venturi there. If anything was going to come out, it should have just been coming out the transition and the idle circuit at the bottom of the barrels, these two barrels. So um, let's see if we could turn it over. I know there's gonna be some fuel in here still. But you can see, yeah, see, there's the fuel coming out. <laughs> you can see the idle and transition circuits right there at the bottom of the carburetor. And as you open up your throttle, you'll see the idle and transition circuits opening up more and more. And that's all of them right there. There's one, two, three, and then the fourth circuit right there. So. That's where it should have been coming out, but it wasn't. It was coming out of everywhere. So that's what we're going to start doing today. Getting all that set up and getting everything all cleaned up. Hopefully I can have it all done today. I doubt it. It's probably going to be a couple of days on this one. All apart now. So we have the top, the body, and the base. So the body would just go sitting on the top of the base just as is and then the top would sit on the top of the body as is. So they would just go together that way. Then we have the whole choke and choke pull-off setup right here, which controls all of this. So your choke goes on and off. This is the stove right here, and it has your little bimetal spring. And as that bimetal spring heats up, it contracts and opens up the choke. So when you first start your car and it's cold, it'll be like that. Once the manifold starts getting warmed up, it'll start opening up the choke and the choke will just start a little bit at a time doing that as that bimetal spring heats up. Um, I said contracts, it expands actually. Then we have, this is the gasket that goes between the body and the base and this is the gasket that goes between the top and the body. Here we have the float cover, so that sits right in here. Then we have the float, and oh, I'll start throw it together real quick. So the float would sit like that, right in the body there, okay? Then down there you have your two jets and your jets are those little things right there. That's one jet and the other one's over there. These are all the pieces for the carburetor. These are your air idle bleed screws right there. So at idle, you can adjust how much fuel goes in and out of your primary jets at idle and down through the idle circuit. Then we have our needles which those will sit right over here, like so. And then these metering rods will go inside the jets down there. And I'll show you how that should look. It's a little hard holding the camera, but that'll look something like this. And they'll sit down in there, just like that inside the jets. And these are controlled by vacuum and that little spring right there see that spring that spring goes underneath these and these will move up and down so as the car is started the vacuum will actually end up pulling these down 
and overcoming the weight of the spring. As you press on the gas pedal, the vacuum will decrease and start letting these up, which will open up the jets and let more fuel into the primaries. And you can see how the metering rods are tapered. So they'll be sitting all the way in, right about here, to the jet. And then as you accelerate or push the pedal harder, they'll come out and they'll sit further and further out until just the very tip of the needle is sitting in the jet. So this way you can get as much fuel through your primaries as possible. And that goes there. Then we have your backfire or your one-way check valve. That's there. And then there's a little ball bearing and that sits in that hole right over there. Your float will have the needle hanging off of it and that's your needle and you can see the little wear mark right there where this needle hangs off of and the needle will sit inside the seat and the seat will sit let's pull this float back out again which is a PIA to get out with one hand there we go and we'll put your float back there and then our needle will, our seat will sit right there. So you can kind of see how this goes together. So with the seat sitting there, the needle will sit on the back of the float, right like so. Hold on, I'm putting it together for you so hard trying to hold the camera and do this all at the same time sorry guys so the needle will sit right there like that and then drop into the seat not the bowl drop into the seat and as the float pivots up and down on this hinge here it will allow the needle to come in and out, allowing fuel to flow into the bowl of the carburetor. So that's basically how this thing works. Um, then you have your secondaries here and your secondaries here, which as you get real heavy on the pedal or you floor it, the secondaries will start to open and you will open these first. As the vacuum starts pulling through your secondaries, it will start opening up your upper butterflies, allowing more and more air to flow through. As the air flows through, it will open up more and more, allowing fuel to start pouring out of here and start dumping lots and lots of fuel into your secondaries. And man, when they open up, you can tell on a Rochester, they just do the boop sound. So it's really cool. Love doing this. I will keep you up to date as we go. Oh, and these are just a bunch of the parts that come out of the uh, carburetor. Those are your secondary needles right there. That's your secondary holder for your needles. And they will mount right up on here on the secondaries. The needles go through there. They go through right over here. And you see those two holes all the way at the bottom? They go through those two holes there. As you push on the carburetor and this butterfly starts to open, there's a little cam that pushes this up which will end up pushing up your needles and allowing more and more fuel to go through those two jets down there, which then start going into your secondaries and then into your motor. So there you go. A little bit of how a Rochester carburetor works. Lots of pieces, lots of parts on them. They are a bit complicated. Uh, they are one of the hardest carburetors to assemble and disassemble and get right. But once you get them right, they run so well. So talk to you in a little bit. Keep you up to date. Okay, bye.